Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for the military appreciating riding of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. And they wonder why the troops are leaving the military in droves. The Chief of Defence Staff pleads for military support in one breath, but kicks out hundreds of serving military personnel for refusing a shot in the next breath. New recruits can decide for themselves, but uh, serving troops who've declined are on their way out if they haven't already been given the boot. Recruits from rural Canada have been accused of being having toxic masculinity by a Trudeau defense parliamentary secretary. Sailors from down east posted to Esquimau sell off their homes, but don't even end up with enough money to make a down payment at their new base. The government suggests soldiers look into getting habitats for humanity if they can't find an affordable place to live. The ongoing rout of sexual predators from the military and the systemic wokeism has fostered a snitch culture within the Canadian Armed Forces. If someone overhears someone else's conversation and their feelings are hurt, the perpetrator of the hurt can have a complaint made against them. These policies are a deliberate attempt to pit military members against one another, to draw attention away from the fact that they don't have the equipment they need. And it's no wonder more and more military members just want out. Last week, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, warned Trudeau and his incompetent finance minister that Canada is, quote, teetering on the edge of a recession, unquote. The IMF is the organization that directs the bailouts for failed states. All those impoverishing prices you're paying at the gas pump and on your heating bills is a windfall for the government. The money goes from your pockets to theirs because you're paying even more in taxes to the government without their even having to go to parliament for a vote on a tax increase. And that's after you, your pay or pension check has been skimmed to keep Justin in the air, flitting from one champagne party to the next from country to country. It keeps the malfunctioning public service back at home in their jammies and bunny slippers collecting full pay instead of going to the office to issue your passport or getting paperwork done so your mother can come for a visit from the old country or your brother can escape the murderous regime in Afghanistan. All that extra money will be used to buy your votes. Yeah. Things like the new dental serve or the six for $650 per child. Remember to keep those receipts because a couple years down the road, the Canada Revenue Agency will come and knock for those receipts and any leftovers. Everyone should be keeping all dental and medical receipts anyhow. In some circumstances, it may help to reduce the income tax you pay. Back to the IMF. For a country to be issued such a warning should be humiliating, but not for our prime minister, who doesn't concern himself with monetary policy. He said so himself. You'll forgive me if I don't think about monetary policy. All that extra money circulating in the economy drives up the cost of living. Then interest rates go up to force the inflation down. People can't pay their mortgages. The real estate market collapses. Investors in mortgage funds lose their shirts. And before you know it, employers close shop, paper over the windows, and hang up the clothes sign. And thousands and thousands of people are out of jobs. But Trudeau and Freeland have been fanning the flames of inflation, intentionally raising the cost of living. Our new conservative leader warned uh, the dumb and dumber duo about inflation months before it hit the grocery stores. The liberals and the other far left parties like to pin the blame on Putin, but not so. Putin's megalomaniacal attempted seizure of Ukraine is exacerbating it but our inflation is homegrown. It was set into motion the minute the Liberals gained power in October of 2015. Trudeau's heir apparent went to Washington last week and raised a few eyebrows with a speech calling for 
a new world order. Finance Minister Freeland said Canada should push for an economic version of NATO. Her idea is that by increasing trade between democracies, we can limit the economic power of countries such as Russia and China. Unlike our boss, the Deputy Prime Minister is not quite an idiot. She knows that increasing trade with our allies while constraining the ambitions of Russia and China could just be as easily be called the Harper Doctrine. But instead, she used the left-wing dog whistle, New World Order, to pitch her idea. As a World Economic Forum trustee, Freeland knows full well what calling for a New World Order will sound like to many people. But this might be an example of the Liberals adopting a new marketing technique from Hollywood called fan baiting. Fan baiting is when they initially stoke a, a, a small backlash from a, a couple of online trolls and use the fake controversy to drum up attention while deflecting legitimate c criticism. No one actually cares about the gender or skin color of imaginary creatures in movies, but if anybody complains about their movie, they can call the critics sexist and racist. Sound familiar? It's the Trudeau handbook. If you disagree that federal vaccine mandates are an effective way to increase injection rates, Trudeau and allies will call you a racist. Now, that, now they have it set up that if you criticize Freeland's New World Order, her speech, they'll call you a conspiracist. The irony is that it doesn't matter if Freeland was secretly conspiring to push a New World Order or doing it publicly in a live stream speech from Washington, D.C., the response from our allies will be the same. Laughter. They won't be laughing at the basic idea that democracies should trade more with one another and less with our enemies. As I said earlier, that was Stephen Harper's foreign policy. What's laughable is the idea that under Justin Trudeau, Canada would have any credibility whatsoever. Freeland said she wants to see an economic version of NATO. She actually said this less than a week after the head of Canada's armed forces issued an unprecedented reconstitution order. Since 2019, our military has lost one in 10 members. Our troops have been ordered to halt all non-essential activities and focus on recruitment and retention. The chief of defense staff even admits this historic emergency reconstitution order will put military readiness at risk. Our proud armed forces are literally disintegrating under Trudeau. We've never met our commitment to NATO to increase our defense spending to 2% of GDP. We can't even maintain our own military much contribute, much less contribute to fully to our military alliances. Yet despite all of that, Freeland thinks we're the perfect country to lead the push for an economic version of that alliance. Our allies don't respect us. They can't count on us. Yet the liberals think we can really rally the world behind us. Trudeau would have better luck playing a mermaid in blackface. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.